At this point, vocalizing any support for gun rights, no matter the level, is seen as a faux pas. I can't tell you how many times I've heard I'm wrong for my beliefs on gun ownership. But I won't be silenced, because our Second Amendment rights are crucial for starting the annual foot race at the Midsummer Jubilee. Guns stand for our rebel history, ideals of independence, and the power of the Jubilee's rebels to unite us in fair years and in foul. Sometimes I just wish anti-gun legislators would stop to think, what would life in Shepherd's Corners be without the foot race? Without the hardy young men and winsome lasses racing the flower-strewn footpath as blue and yellow ribbons flutter gaily upon their wrists? Hearing that glorious blast of the starting pistol upon the town green in mid-June, that's a constitutional right that must be protected. Only after the gun is fired may the debutantes dance their exuberant polka that impels their woven tresses to sway to and fro. I mean, what would gun control advocates have us do? Replace the pistol's splendid crack with the mere ringing of a bell? As if the ringing of a bell were not already the cue to break open the cask of damps and wine? The heart of the issue is this. If the government starts restricting these individual liberties, I know what'll be next. Register in the great vats in which we boil tender new potatoes. Requiring permits to decorate one's lintel with the branches of birch that attract midsummer fortune. Or worse, licenses to weave bluebells into one's hair before the polka. Now we have got to acknowledge the danger of setting this political precedent. In the end, so-called gun control is just shorthand for I want to take away the strudel and the floral wreaths and the 20-foot tall pole in the city square festooned with lavender garlands. That's something my conscience will never support.